right? So it's my privilege to actually introduce today the gentleman who is going to give us the message. And I know God has put it on his heart. And it's his birthday. Stan Griffin, would you come up here? Stan Griffin is going to give the version today. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Stan. Happy birthday to you. I asked Chris not to uh, hold time against me when he announces my, um, my default language. You understand that uh, I was um, born in Emmanuel Baptist Church when I was 16 years old. And I was also weaned there, and there was no living translation at that time. <laughs> You have to understand, that's 60 years for me, being born again, living with God. 60 years. Okay, that makes me 76. You did your math. Good for you. You're awake this morning. All right. I want to hear that. Okay. Take a breath. I am going to... This morning, hit you with a shotgun. <laughs> this is a shotgun blast. I'm not dwelling long on any one verse because there's 20 of them. But the word says that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Word of God. And I was trained in the Word of God in the Baptist Church. Let me know. Let me, let me tell you. If anybody knows about the Baptist Church, you know that you get the Word of God there. All right? Okay. To start off with, I need to let you know, I was, I was a remodel contractor. I say remodel. I was. I still am a remodel contractor. <laughs> and one thing about remodel contractors is that you get into stuff you never even knew existed. That's why new construction stays away from it. They say, I don't want to touch that stuff. One of the examples I got into, I remodeled the kitchen. People were very, very happy with it. And they uh, got a brand new stove. Well, actually, almost brand new. It came from the neighbor who said, who said we, we got a brand new one. This is only may, maybe a couple months old. Would you like it? Oh, sure. And it really was a beautiful stove. They put it in their, they put it in their house. And they were so thrilled with it. And the second day they had it, it stopped working. They couldn't get a thing cooked for breakfast or anything. That Sunday morning, they just said, what are we, well, we're just going to have to pick something up on the way to church. That's all there is to it. And then they called me and said, Stan, did you touch the wiring? <laughs> no, I did not touch the wiring on that. Okay, the long story short, they went and got a hold of their neighbor that they bought it from. And the neighbor said, no, we didn't have any problem with it. Oh, boy. I said, well, do you have a manual on it? Do you have a manual? Do you know where, uh, wh how it operates? And they gave him the manual, okay? And they found out it was a kosher stove. You know what that is? It doesn't work on Sundays. Now, now that is really, I, I, I couldn't take any fault or any credit for it. I was so glad it did not touch me in my work, okay? A kosher stove. So the point is, read the manual. When you get an appliance, read the manual. You know, we just assume that it's going to be what we've always used and how it's always worked. Well, guess what happens? We come to God, and we see him, and we look at his word through our worldly eyes. And that's how we interpret God. That's how we interpret the word, through the worldly eyes. And he says, no, 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 it's through spiritual eyes. He comes along in Isaiah 53, 1. He says, who's believed our report? And to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? When God says, who's the arm of the Lord revealed? I'll tell you what. He's rolling up his sleeve and said, we're going to go for this. We're going to start bringing up some stuff. Okay? Now, I'm sorry. I'm usually a very timid, quiet person. 
but the Lord has built a fire in me, and I can't help it today. You're going to get it because I got it. <laughs> you know, I got it first, so you're going to get it now. Zechariah 4.6. Lord said unto me, this is the word of the Lord unto Zerubbabel. It's not by might, not by power, but by my spirit. It's not by what I learned when I was growing up. It's not by what I can do with my strength and my reasoning power. It is by the spirit of God. Amen. Because in Romans 10, 9, and 10, I was born on this verse. I was nurtured on this verse. I want to let you know something interesting. I'm still on this verse because I am still being saved. Amen. Confess with your mouth. Believe in your heart. I could do that. That was easy. For the heart man's believe unto righteousness. With mouth confession is made unto salvation. And then we say, yes, Lord. And God says, all right. I'm going to give you something. I'm going to give you the Holy Spirit as a down payment to say, you're now walking with him. And that's where we are. We're with the Holy Spirit. I'm going to take a little bit further on this verse because you have to re realize I, I really, really, really seek God a lot. And the Lord showed me that when we accept him, we know the verse that says our new name is written down in heaven, Right? A new name is written down in heaven. Well, in Revelation, he says, he's given us a name that's only known between him and me. Only known between him and me. Whenever we make a mistake, we come to God, I'm sorry, God, for doing this. I'm sorry. Even before that, he has already forgiven us. He already has looks to us. Whenever he deals with us, he's dealing with us looking at that name that he already knows. Therefore, it's through his rose-colored glasses of Jesus on the cross that he sees us in that name, that purpose, that goal he has for each one of our lives. Now, that was a fresh revelation. I hope you enjoyed it. But salvation is a cleansing process. It's not... Once saved, it's continually being saved. We're working through it. That's why I, for a long time, I asked God, why am I still on this earth? I mean, I love you. Let's go to heaven. Hey. Yeah, he says, oh, they got some work to do in you. And that's why we are redeeming our soul, our intellect, our emotions, our willpower. It's being redeemed, being transformed into a spiritual being, letting the spirit take more precedence than our flesh. In Ephesians 1.17, for the spirit of wisdom and revelation, of insight into mysteries and secrets and the deep and intimate knowledge of him, that has been my quest in my life, the deep and intimate knowledge of him. I am passionate for God. Yeah. Can you tell? <laughs> I, have two, I teach two Bible studies. And they say, well, Stan, why are you teaching two of them? Well, because they deal with different subjects. Because I love the word of God. Because it, it burns within my soul. Whenever anything comes up, what does the word have to say about it? He says, uh, you can know and understand what is the immeasurable and unlimited surpassing greatness of his power. Is that a goal? Is that a purpose? Is that something that you want to go for? I'll tell you what. That makes me hungry. That makes me hungry. I am always seeking more. When I married my wife, she was so godly. She taught the cat's flannel graph pictures of the cross, okay? I mean, she was really, she was really there. And she worked up since then into children's church and all that kind of stuff. And I knew when I married her, listen, I better get on a stick. Because she was really ahead of me. And I'm supposed to be the leader? Ho, ho. I'll tell you what, it is a goal to always have somebody ahead of you encouraging you to keep going, encouraging you to progress further. One of the things that I have a wonderful conversation with a uh, great friend, and we were talking about communion. I'm going to, touch, I'm going to be touching on some subjects here that might, might 
kind of rub you a little bit wrong, but listen to me. I thought the spirit in these things, and he says, you know, the problem is that um, they make my actions into a religion, and then they camp there. They say that communion is only about the suffering of the Lord Jesus and all the things that he went through suffering on the cross. And I said to him, I said, no, my Lord didn't stay there. And not only did he not stay there, but his body was given for my healing. By his stripes I am healed. His blood was not only for my forgiveness, but his blood is the power over the enemy and everything he wants to come against us. The blood of Christ is our strength. And that's where I go beyond just suffering. I don't like suffering. But I'll tell you what I do like. I like the power over the enemy in all things. I have it. But we need to learn how to use it is the real question. In Hebrews 12.1, it says, um, let us throw off everything that hinders us. Growing constantly, asking the Lord questions. He says, for the joy set before him, he endured the cross. What was that joy before the Lord? It was every one of us that Jesus comes to the Father and says, Father, I have brought your family back to you again because that has been the heart of the Father all along is my children to come back to me, my children to know who I am, my children to experience my love, my children to hear me and to know that I love them. Those songs are powerful this morning. The mood in here, the, the spirit of the Lord is great in here. It's for the joy set before us. So the point is, number two is Jesus is a victor, not a victim. Because they did not take his life from him. You read the word and it says, he bowed his head and he gave up the spirit. I have been given some theology books and I said, oh, Jesus lost so much blood for all the beating and the whipping. No wonder he could even make it to the cross. Such lies. Because that's religion. I say get in the word and read what the word says. The word says he gave up his life. It was in his power. Why? Because it says he bowed his head and gave up the spirit. His spirit. That's who we are. We have been born again by the spirit of a living God. And unless we let the spirit teach us, we will stop and settle in just the same old habits. Maybe they're good habits, and that's wonderful. But they're not where he wants us to be because he's looking at us through our new name that he's given us. Okay. In Ephesians 2, he said he made us alive. He's made us alive. We were dead. Now we're alive. How are we alive? By the Spirit, by the Spirit. For we know God's own handiwork. We are his workmanship. You know what? God loves a challenge. <laughs> God loves a challenge. I'm sorry to say that he loves me even greater because of the challenge I brought him all of my 60 years. But it's been my privilege because he has continued to teach me again and again and again. We were sealed at our birth, yes. But in Ephesians, it says, we now can enter into the fullness of the Spirit. And at that, that fullness of the Spirit was a symbolic of, we have tongues as a result of being baptized a second time by the Holy Spirit. Tongues is plural. Now, I'm going to disrupt a few people. I'm sorry. But tongues is plural. If you don't like the tongue that you have, ask him for another one. I've had people talk to me and say, it's so difficult to talk in tongues because it's so, it's a tongue twister. Well, yeah. Well, guess what? Ask him for another one. Ask him for a language for each purpose you have in your life. If you want a love language, ask him for a love language. 
There's the love language. There's the everyday talking language. There's a warrior language. Get the fire burning, and he will give you the language to accomplish his purpose. Because who are we speaking to? We're speaking to him to work things out. Because we are a spirit. We need to talk in the spirit. And so I encourage everybody here, do so. If you want to know how, well, we'll have another class on that one too. Okay, Romans 8, 11. But the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwell in you. Now hold on. He that raised Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies by his spirit that dwells in you. I told you I'm a remodel contractor. I'm 76, and I'm still out there doing heavy construction. How can I do that? Because I rely upon the spirit of God to renew this body. And I'm standing here before you. Praise God. I've been on my back. I've been, I've had surgery on my back. I've then injured myself. And I was a year on uh, not able to sit, walk, or stand for 15 minutes at a time. What am I doing in heavy construction? Because God called me to it. That's another story. We won't even get near that one. But it's his indwelling spirit daily refreshing me. Daily, he is the Lord, my shepherd. He leads me. He guides me. He protects me in paths of righteousness. And I come to him, and I say, Lord, I think I messed up. And he says, well, guess what? There's no temptation taking you, but such is as common to man. But God will with that temptation. Make a way to escape that you may be able to bear it. That is a confession I learned a long time ago. And I encourage you to also remember those confessions, okay? Remember the things that he taught you because it is a growing process. We will get into more and more and more difficult situations because he's teaching us, bringing us along. I taught in surgery for a number of years. I taught nurses how to scrub, pass instruments and everything. And I started them off very easy, like a carpal tunnel, something like that. It was very simple surgery. And you know, we went on to a carotid and I wrecked him cleaning that. And then I, I brought him along all the way up to aortic aneurysm. Aortic aneurysms are really um, a touchy things because they don't behave like they're supposed to. As soon as you open up the abdomen, it takes all the pressure off of that aorta, and they can rupture like that. You know, it's pretty good size, and it puts out a lot of blood real fast, and you don't want a scrub nurse who says, what do I do now? <laughs> it's the same thing in our lives. We are trained so that we can handle the situations when they come. Right. All right. It's good to go to God in prayer. But give him some faith-filled words to act upon. Romans 8, 26. The Holy Spirit comes to our aid and bears us up in our weaknesses. He pleads on our behalf with unspeakable yearnings and groanings too deep for utterances. Once again, we come to the place of saying, I don't know what to do, God. Yes, you do. Hit it with tongues. Hit it with tongues. That's the only thing you can do. We can speak it in English, but it doesn't quite get to the point. Because in Romans 8.26, the Holy Spirit bears us up, and he uses his language to keep our, and what we must do is keep our tongue fluid. So the point is, stand on your declarations. Stand on them. In Proverbs 18.21, death and life are in the power of the tongue. I'll tell you what, I'll choose life because I don't want to start saying death words. Mm -hmm. I don't want to say, oh, I just feel bad this morning when I got up. You know, this aches and that aches and something else aches. Well, it may still ache unless you guess what? You start changing the definition of your tongue. Mm -hmm. And you say, he that desireth life, he keeps his tongue from evil. Mm -hmm. In Numbers 13, we know the account. They sent out the, he sent out the spies, and they came back, and uh, 
They didn't do so well. They came back and said, oh, man, it's really great food. It's honey. Oh, things are wonderful in the land. Ah, oh, but there's giants there. They're the descendants of Anakin. And we can't go up against them. I mean, who are we? We've never been taught to battle or anything. Guess what? Caleb says, no, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Don't be discouraged. Let's go up. We're well able to take the land. But it says, and they spread among the Israelites a bad report. In James 3, 9 through 12, with a tongue we praise the Lord and Father, and with it we curse human beings who have been made in God's likeness. I'm going to stop right there and say, listen, men, women, husbands, wives, do not curse your spouse. Do not say inflammatory words to them or anybody else that you might know as a Christian because I'll tell you what, you're offending God. And if you do, then apologize quickly. I become a lot faster in apologizing. <laughs> For out of the same mouth come praisings and cursings. This is should not be. Fresh water and salt out of the same springs. Brothers and sisters, listen. I've said enough of that. You got the point. Okay, over in John. John chapter 6. Jesus ran into the same situations. You know what? Yeah, you see what it ha happened up there, don't you? Guess what? He is telling them, I'm the bread of life. Wonderful. You got to eat this flesh. You got to drink this blood. Oh, for a Jew that won't even eat an animal of some type, times, guess what? That was really offensive. And the problem is, is that they were unable to discern spiritual language. That was the spiritual message. That's what we do at communion. We eat his flesh and we drink his blood. Well, we take the bread, we take the you know, commun communion cup. Okay? But this is where we need to discern the word of God. Back to read the manual. All right. They grumbled about his words, and what did they do? They turned and walked away from the bread of life. If we don't understand what God's doing in our lives and we become offended at him, well, ask him what's going on, but don't turn your back on him. I love the songs we sang today, but I'm going to correct one of them for you. Uh-oh. There's nothing God cannot do. There's a couple of things he won't do. He will not go against your own will. We're suffering because of Adam. He will not go against your own will. And the other thing is unforgiveness. It stops the work of God. It stops the Holy Spirit. Unforgiveness has no place in a Christian's life. And when it occurs, not if, when it occurs, somehow get it resolved. You go and you apologize. You try to work things out. If it doesn't, then say, okay, Lord, I yield it to you, but I did what I could. Okay? But watch out for those two things. All right. <clears throat> Jesus, <laughs> words are uh, uh, in uh, the uh, point number four, spiritual thinking and spiritual words. So is my word that goes out of my mouth. It will not return to me, that's Isaiah 55, 11, will accomplish what I desire and achieve the purpose for which I send it. The work that Jesus sends to us is to declare 
his word over our lives. This is where we get into Mark 11, point number five. Believe it and say it. Mark 11, 23 is really a verse that goes, uh, has really bothered a lot of people. Let's just be truthful about it. Truly I say to you, <clears throat> I say to this mountain, go and throw your throat into the sea and does not doubt in his heart but believes what they say will happen to be done. How many of us have mountains? You don't need to show your hand. I know we all do. How do we move those mountains? We move it by the living word. We move it by finding a confession there that we can get a hold of. Because in Hebrews 4.12 it says, The word of God is quick and powerful. <laughs> and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing, even dividing, asunder, soul and spirit, and joints and marrow. Boy, I'll tell you what, I've really had to use that verse to declare it. I tell my bones, I tell my joints, listen, I am filled with the spirit, and I'll tell you what, joints and marrow, you get under the name of Jesus, you get under that spirit and leave my body alone and tell it to take a hike. But that's where we have to get trained to be able to do it. It doesn't come just overnight. That's how we attack mountains. We find the word. There's resources, topical Bible, and they're on your concordance in different places. You can find it, but hit it with the Holy Spirit. That's who we are, filled with the Holy Spirit. And the key, not only declaring that word, but the key is thank him for the answer mm -hmm. before you see it yeah. because it means you've had faith to believe it. Right. Yeah, yeah. Far more is accomplished in thanking him mm -hmm. than anything else in our lives because he says he, he causes us to lie down in green pastures mm -hmm. by still waters mm -hmm. and he restores my soul. He leads me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake so that I can stand and be able to go through those valleys of the shadows of death. Yeah. We're faced today with far more death than I think anybody has seen or been aware of in times past. But we are not to fear. We are not to fear. We are not people of fear. Fear, be gone. Because fear comes from the enemy to cause you to stop walking. Fear comes as a, something to quench you. I refuse to be quenched. Okay. He says, who his own self? First uh, Peter, First Peter 2, 24. We confess, and his own self bear sins upon the body on tree. We were being dead to sins, lived to righteousness, by whose stripes were healed. Like I said, I confess that all the time. By his stripes, I am healed. I don't feel well. By his stripes, I am healed. I have a stomachache. By his stripes, I am healed. I don't know what's going on with my stomach. Frankly, I don't care. Get in line with what the Word of God says. And don't let the tax of Satan tell you otherwise. Okay? Let the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart, that's in Psalms 1914, be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. My verse that I use all the time has taught me well. And that is Philippians 4.13. It says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. That's my confession. And I have trained myself to never say all the things I run into, I don't know how to do this. Because when I say I don't know how, I am limiting who? 
I'm limiting the spirit of God who gives the answers in all things. In all things. If we don't have the answer, then we just seek it and seek it and seek it and look for it. I was dealing with the situation, and I was saying, God, what did I do wrong? Did I have a hole in my umbrella somewhere? You know, the umbrella is saying that everything's supposed to be protected by God. Did I have a hole in my umbrella? What are you teaching me? It was a month. It was a month. But in his word, he showed me a passage, and I said, Oh, God, I see it now. Don't give up on reading the manual, ever. And read it with a spiritual understanding. If you don't have that, then ask him for it. And he will more than willingly give you anything that pertains to godliness. So, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I believe his word and I say it. Then I thank him for hearing me and I expect to see wondrous things. Develop a capacity to receive from the Lord and then cultivate a lifestyle of thanksgiving in all things. And because of that, we have the ending song. Guess what? It's be bold. Who are we? We walk with Christ. We've been raised with him in heavenly places. We are the kingdom of God upon this earth. And that's where we walk, and that's where we live. Praise the Lord. And, <clears throat> and um, kind of goes along with my age. I uh, mentioned a song. I like to have a song afterwards. And uh, some who've been Christians a long time says, gee, I've never heard that before. <laughs> well, guess what? We're in for a new treat today then, because bless the Lord, I look for great things from him in all things. Lord, we just bless the, your name for this word, Lord. We commit it to you in your name, Jesus. Amen. 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 You know, you can stand with us as we worship the Lord together. But before we get too heavy in that song, you know I love what Stan is saying. First of all, I think he's too much in Star Wars because it's Aiken, not Anakin. But that was Anakin for Skywalker, but we'll see. Yeah, you can play with us, Steve. Um, but Philippians 4.13, in some ways I believe the Scripture's reference is in Christ I can do all things rather than I can do all things in Christ, right? So it's through Christ. It's in Christ, but not for Christ. And he doesn't just empower me. We're only empowered to do it his will is. And that's what Stan is really just reflecting upon. And there's three things that kind of in substance can give us an object for practical lesson today. Air, water, food. He is the bread of life. The spirit is the water, the living water, and air. You know, the funny thing, I, I actually appreciate the spirit of God being referenced as living water. Why? Because living water, how many times have we forget to drink? Like, I, we did a little health class. And we're like, oh, we haven't been drinking enough water for our health, right? But I don't forget a meal. That's not, uh, but yet, in a spiritual sense, the bread that he offers us, can we look for the substance that nourishes us? And I just heard this from Robert Morris. It's like, you have this healthy, good meal in front of you. How many times do you say, oh, I already ate that. I don't want that again. No, it, we eat the same thing over and over, right? Well, the Word of God is substance for our life. We can nourish by reading the same thing, listening. That's what Stan is saying is, is very life verses that are referenced in his heart and his soul are the substance that come from the very Word of God. Hebrews 4.12 divides, but air. Everybody hold your breath for just two seconds. Who's going to hold it? Who's going to keep holding it? He's the very air that we breathe. May the Spirit, like a rushing wind, as Numa, blow in us. It is so important to recognize that we can only declare the things that God has made possible. We do not conjure them up in our spirit, but we allow His Spirit to speak truth. Those are the things 
For I know that I can be content with little or much. For I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. Amen? So let's be bold and be strong. Be bold. Be strong. 